This is a double face, a true crime podcast. Please make sure to follow, like, and subscribe and get the notifications when a new episode drops. Please help by leaving a five-star review. It helps the small podcasters like ourselves. Thank you again. Listener and viewer discretion is advised. Oli Oli's. Hey, this is Jose. Hi, guys. It's Melissa. <laughs> Okay. One of these things. No, no, ya lo hiciste. Yeah. Um, okay, so today we have an episode for you. The only thing is, is that this time it's Melissa's turn, and so she will tell us who it is. I have no idea who it is. Before we start, uh, yesterday we had movie night, right? Yes. And it was nice. Yes, we had movie night. Uh, so we take turns on when one of our best friends is going to, like, either Rosa will do it, she'll do it, or I'll do it, I'll cook, and then we'll watch a movie. And we just started it, right? Yeah, we just started it. Like yeah. maybe a couple of weeks ago. And mm-hmm. it feels nice to just... The movie. It's... Cool, cool. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, it does. Because yeah. we're catching up we're, when we're watching the movie. <laughs> it depends on what movie we're watching. And yesterday it was kind of... Me and Jose were the... Well, all of us were. But me and you mainly were like, what does this mean? And what, what does, does that mean? mean? <laughs> and we were both wanting to know. Because there's some things we just don't know. And, of course, the other one's like, be quiet, just watch it. And I was like, well, we have quite said. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we could ever watch a movie without even talking. But yet, when we go to a theater, we're like. No, she can talk. She's lying. She can talk her mouth off. That's why it almost like, yes, you can. Especially if Chris is next to you. Oh, yeah, with Chris, yes. Yes. That's why they have to go sit by themselves. But me, I'd like to stay quiet. It's like I saw this guy not go out on a second date with the girl because she talked during the movie. I'm the same way. We ain't going to hook up anymore. <laughs> <laughs> with that said, now let's get into the to the podcast. So when I was doing uh, my research, I was just like, because I, I didn't have anybody because I said I had picked somebody, but it, it didn't feel, right. I didn't, yeah, it didn't feel right to me. And you're like, well, don't do it. But it doesn't feel right. Yeah. So I was doing research. The way it came out was this uh this young or well, this person is the youngest woman to be sentenced to death row in the United States. Uh okay. I've never wait. The youngest female. I feel like I've heard of her, but I don't know what her story is. Yeah, she's just the youngest. I'm not saying she's the only one, she's just the youngest, the youngest one. At, as of today. As of today. Okay, sorry if I'm burping, but I'm eating, I'm drinking a... I'm drinking a drink. No, just kidding. It's not a drink. No, it's a a seltzer water. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So, this is going to be about Krista Pike. No, I've never Never heard of her. her? Okay. So, Krista Pike was born on March 10th, 1976. She was born to the parents of... No, I'm sorry. It's... (laughs) I just... It's easy. I'm just... It is Carissa Hansen. Carissa, Carissa Hansen. And I said it in my head. It's because I'm trying to memorize the other names oh. that totally flew off. Anyways, and uh, Glenn Pike. Uh, and they lived in Berkeley, West Virginia. Uh, Chris's parents were had an unhealthy relationship. Okay. And had the best relationship. Uh, and after two years of marriage, they decided to get a divorce. But... And and the reason why they got a divorce is because her mom was cheating on her dad. <laughs> I know that was like, I was like, wait, let me read that again. And I was like, okay, I just wanted to make sure. Um, so after two years of marriage, they decide to get a divorce because uh, her mom is cheating on her dad. But in about a year or so, uh, Krista's mother attempts suicide. So what do they do? The dad and the mom get back together and get married. Not the don't leave me or I'm going to, I can't, it's already, it's, she sounds unhealthy. Yes. So, um, stayed married for a few years, decided to get divorced again. And this is where I think, uh, Krista's childhood takes kind of a, a turn or it becomes very traumatic for her okay. because now her mom has like a revolving door of men coming in and out in and out and almost so after the divorce after the divorce okay. yeah so it almost feels like it, from what i understood from watching the um the episode that i was watching mm-hmm. it sounds like almost every one of them was either abusive physically or they were sexually abusing uh krista oh no 
Yeah. So in that time frame that her mom has these men coming in and out of, of her life, uh, Krista's all, uh, also bouncing between her parent or her mother, her grandparents, her mother, her other grandparents. So it's just getting tossed around because Krista's mom never, I, yeah, Krista's mom never had food at home. So it was kind of one of those oh. things. Yeah. But as Krista got older, so remember I told you she, she was being sexually abused, but her mother never did anything about it. Oh, uh, shocking. Yeah. yeah I wasn't never did anything about it. So there's, there's one, well, there's two already, three. And then on top of that, Krista and her mother were smoking weed, getting high together. Oh, so this is her friend, honey. So this I was just friend. like, oh, here he goes. So at the age of 18, Krista drops out of high school and she moves to Knoxville, Tennessee. When she moves to Knox, uh, Knoxville, Tennessee, she enrolls in like this government program that they have in Tennessee. Uh, and Knoxville is like the, the base of this program. And this program is where they help you. Um, to, it went into a nursing program, but it's different programs within that. Uh, uh, gov it's government, uh, government program is what they kept emphasizing. Okay. So she entered as a, for the nursing program. Um, and th what this does. Why, why did you do quote, air quotes? It's not a nursing program? No, it is. But, oh. <laughs> but she, no, meaning like she entered. Like she entered. Oh, God, God, God. Like, oh my God, I want to, you know, better my life type of thing. Poor thing. Okay. But yeah. So, in so this, she was trying. No, she was trying. Okay. She was trying. But I think as you, as I start getting through the story, it's just like, okay. okay. <laughs> so this program was in a like old Holiday Inn building. So, you know, how they have the rooms are. So each uh, student had, <laughs> had their own room. <laughs> Wait, so it was more like a, so they lived at, mm -hmm. at the yes. location? It, yeah, it's almost okay, like, that one's weird. Yeah, it's almost like it was a, a, a university, on, well, not a university, but a college. So, but since it was government funded and what eventually started happening is when kids, troubled kids would commit a crime. And I'm not saying like a murder, but it's like if you're stealing something or yeah. possession of something. What they would do is send these kids to this program to help them out and see, okay, we're going to give you a second chance. Pick whatever it is that you want, whether it be nursing, computing, whatever it is that you want. I feel like there's a few like that in Texas because my brother did mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. So he got a, like a certificate for it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. is that the same? So it's, it sounds like it's Similar. kind of the same. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it was in an old uh, Holiday Inn building, mm -hmm. and it was five five uh, five floors. Okay. So I I don't know how it it uh, if it would go by ages or it go by whatever you were signing up for. Like the level you're yeah. in if uh -huh. you're close to graduating. Yeah. So like the, senior. Yeah. yeah. So the ages would start at fifteen to twenty two, depending. Oh, that's yeah, a that's, huge age gap. Yeah, that is. So that's what I'm saying. I w I wonder if because they never mentioned it. I wonder if they were go by ages on each floor or it's like, okay, you're going to do nursing. You're all going to stay here. But is it all female? No, it's like a co-ed. Not a co-ed. <laughs> oh, so it's a fun time, honey. Pretty much. And then for me, obviously you have teachers and you have somebody running it, but you have a lot of freedom, honestly, because your parents That's what happens there. after school. Exactly. So from, now that you say that, from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m., you're able to sign yourself out and roam about Knoxville, wherever, if you're, they called it the Strip. So I'm assuming there's probably a lot of restaurants, a lot of, oh yeah, yeah. Like, we call it here the Strip, but it's just like the gay bars. Yeah, so that's how they called it over there, but I'm assuming it was just restaurants, malls, shopping, probably a shopping center, if anything. Uh, so they would sign themselves out, go and have fun, do their thing, as long as you're back by the curfew of 10 a.m. 10 p.m. Okay. Sorry. sorry, kind of jumped into that one. <laughs> but Krista, when she got there, she didn't really have you know, friends or anything like that. You know how you kind of come in. She's kind of having a hard time. Yeah. But she does become best friends with a girl named Kim. Okay. Uh, and they were, they were always together. They were inseparable. Um, thick as thieves, honey. Yeah, thick as thieves. Yeah, there you go. And... At this point, Colleen Slimmer comes in. Who? Colleen Slimmer. 
Oh, okay. I was all what? Yes, because they're all coming in as uh, I guess like one after another. Okay. Um, and I I want to say Colleen was probably the last one to come in. Uh, I think it was Krista and then Colleen or Colleen and then Krista, something like that. Uh, and she too was a troubled child. Her parents were divorced. Um having a hard time in school so she decided to say hey mom i want a better life can you let me go uh to this uh program that they have for kids and so her mom was just like i don't want to because she's originally from florida and you're traveling all the way to knoxville tennessee that's that's pretty big mm -hmm. okay yeah. okay so it's not like you you don't house out of state as well yes yes okay that makes yeah, sense. I'm a, it didn't say if so she, you don't have to live in knoxville to be in this program no because remember also uh krista came in from virginia I to knoxville about that. Yeah. i thought you so the way you said it it made it seem like she moved Ah, she like, did. Like in the sense of, no, like the whole family moved. No, no, no. It was just Krista. You're just mean because she went, she got accepted mm -hmm. to the program. She got yes, through it. Yeah. And so, at this point, she's 18. Okay. Uh, so they're, uh, Krista's 18 uh, and Colleen is 19. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So she, but she was with her mother and her, I think it was her stepfather. And they're just like, no, we don't want you to go. Try and explain to her mom, like, yes, mom, it's something that I want to do. I want to better my life. I want something better for myself. Okay. So she entered this program on October 31st, 1994. And it was uh, going to be a six months program for her. And it was going to be in computing. So oh. Krista went for nursing. Colleen went for computing. Okay. Um, so throughout this whole time, I... I I want to say when did it happen i think it was a couple of months and in between those couple of months she was calling her mom and she was telling her mom hey mom i'm having a hard time i'm not making friends people are are uh they're, it's kind of like she was being bullied i have uh several kids coming into my room stealing my jewelry taking my clothes yeah oh yeah she was being bullied for sure uh she ne she said uh, she told her mom it's, it's three kids it's uh, two girls and one guy that keep just harassing me, keep coming to my room. It's like I'm trying to be nice, but it's it's hard. It's it's getting really hard to, to be here. Okay. Um, so later on, it does come out that it's, it, and I'm going to try to say this name, to Daryl Ship, Krista Pike, and Shandella Peterson are the three kids that are bullying Colleen. Okay. Um, so what happens is that Tadero had a crush on Colleen first because he saw her first. Um, and let me guess, these girls got jealous. And so, <laughs> so I want to say that they talked, maybe dated for a quick minute. Like a second. Honey. Yeah, like a second. But as soon as he laid his eyes on Krista, it was a different story. It's like he forgot about everybody. Okay. And it was just her. It was just honing in on her, and that was it. Right. Um, so they started dating kind of right away, love at first sight. Um, then Krista finds out that Colleen and Tadero had dated for a quick minute. Oh. Became extremely obsessive and very jealous for whatever reason. I'm not sure. Like I'm like, if he's paying that much attention to you, then why do you have to be jealous of colleen yeah I, because she's just like but you have to remember like you remember when we were in middle school and girls are just a different breed yes. guys can just be like fire whatever but i've noticed the girls can t get so intense mm -hmm. about oh you fucked me over even mm -hmm. though she had nothing to do with the situation yeah. it girls will blame a girl before they blame a guy i used to be that way and that's why i we, used to be not that now way. as adults now yeah, we're not like now, uh -uh. Now, yeah now i'm just like no the person that's his fault yeah i was gonna say the person that was in the relationship with me should have been had enough respect to respect that relationship correct yeah. but at that age because they're still young mm -hmm. i would assume that they still have that stupid mindset mm -hmm. of Mm -hmm. A child. Mm -hmm. Oh, she was. She was my man. I hate her for no reason. Yeah, yeah. For no kind of, reason. For no reason. Because she never. Colleen never gave her a reason because it wasn't like. Well, no, he's. I had him first. It wasn't like that at all. It was just like, all right. Well, it was a quick minute. It's fine. It's whatever. It's over. It's over. It's uh, so of course she put it in her mind. Like, nope. 
he's mine. Nobody else is going to take him. And she, be, like I said, she became kind of uh, obsessive. I was trying to find the word. Towards <laughs> Colleen. Towards, well, towards to Daryl because to Daryl is her, her man now. But and, obsessive in the sense of anger towards him. But anger towards Colleen. Yes. Um, so, so one day she would, Krista was hanging out with Kim mm -hmm. and they were talking, you know how cheese meando, you know how girls do. The gossip, honey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know I'm a grown man and I still love es it. Especially. <laughs> like that. <laughs> we're both in it. We're sending each other. We're sending each other. Did you see this? Oh my God. Did you see it? They're still in it. <laughs> So we don't want to be part of it, but we want to be in the background. In the background, ooh, like, ooh, ooh that's we know. Good. <laughs> that is so true. So we'll never grow out of that. So yeah. No, never. But at least we'll be in the behind the scenes. Yes, so yes. Like, ooh, that's good. Mm. <laughs> so they're best friends. So of course they're going to do that. Uh -huh. So um, then Colleen's, then they're like, okay, I like so and so. I get off to her. I don't get off to him. Kind of back and forth. And then Colleen's name comes up. So when Colleen's name comes up, Krista says, you know what? Oh, my God. I'm going to kill her. Oh, yeah. that Okay, that just got <laughs> exactly. real intense. Exactly. And, and her friend was just like, girl, you need to stop. You need to be quiet and you need to sh basically shut up. You don't be saying stuff like that. That oh, girl's never okay. done. That girl's never done anything to you. So there's no reason why you should be saying this. Oh, yeah, okay. Because her, her, her best friend was was really like. That's a good yeah, friend to yeah, tell her, exactly. hey, no, no, hold on. too far, girl, too yeah, far. Too far, too far. Didn't think nothing of it. Um, and then they, Krista kind of like smiles and winks at her like, okay, yeah, whatever, girl. And then they move on to the next subject. So it's oh, one of those. Kind of like, okay, she dropped it. She dropped it, yeah. Okay. But the smiling and the winking stood, stands out to her in that one situation. Because as she's telling the story, she's just like, that stood out to me. You know, it's kind of like the that person that winks and is receiving the wrong message. Okay, girl, I got yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because you don't think But that... really, you're like, no, Pendeja, I really mean don't, don't leave it alone. Yeah. And of, of course, that's what she thought. Her best friend's like, yeah, that's because, again, they're so close. Um, you know, always hanging out. Never, Krista never gave her best friend, Kim, any, like, insinuation, like, I'm going to go do something. Okay. So, of course, she didn't believe it. She's like, girl, relax. Don't You don't got to do all that. Okay. So, on January 12th, 1995, Krista, Tadero, Chandel decide to lure Colleen to a park. And they're... <laughs> yeah. How? So, oh, okay. Let me, let me Sorry. <laughs> Want to get ahead of this story. I, I know. Here. And I... Uh, so, what she does is she goes in... Goes into her best friend's room, Kim, mm -hmm. and she's like, hey, we're all going to go to the park. You know, we're all going to go smoke, get high. You know, do you want to come with us? And Kim's like, no, who's going? Gives her the names. Oh, that girl. Yeah. She's this girl. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, who's going? I don't know. And she, when she mentions Colleen's name to Kim, Kim's like, why are you going to invite her? You don't even like her. And she's like, no, we're just going to go, you know, smoke, get high. It's fine. You know, we're cool. Don't worry about it. Do you want to come or not? Sorry, there's a muffler <laughs> or whatever those are called. <laughs> Is it muffler? Oh, yes. Like, oh, what a mechanic. That's why I started laughing because Jose knows nothing about cars. <laughs> You don't even know what he drives. No, I don't. I, don't. I look at her. I'll be like, what do I drive? I'm like, I don't know. I don't drive the car. 2013? Yes. <laughs> no, she does know it. Shut up. Don't oh. say the car. <laughs> I don't. I wasn't going to say the car. But that was the year. <laughs> <laughs> I was just guessing. That's all I was like, yes, that's the year. Oh, it's a 2020. But that's all I know, the year. <laughs> that's it. I don't know what, I don't know what good car. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry. Squirrel. I know. Um... So uh, Kim's like, no, I don't want to go. You shouldn't go either. I don't know why you're inviting Colleen, but I don't, I don't want to go. She goes, I felt this ugly pain in my stomach, like at the pit of my stomach. Like, I don't, I don't feel right. That's called instinct. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I don't feel right. So of course, Krista says, okay, I'll see you later. Best friend. Love you. Uh, kind of smiles and winks at her again in this situation. Oh, wink, no. wink. Wait, so the best friend's not going? No, the best friend's not going. She's she like, no. okay, I'm no. not going to be part of this, mm -hmm. honey. 
So she leaves her room. That girl is smart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you could tell even even when watching her, she was she was very in tune with uh, her uh, emotions and what was going on, and just mm -hmm. I, it almost seemed like she was there to do what she needed to do, have fun, of course, and get out of here. Okay. Because of her not age. cause problems. Not Correct. cause problems because she the best friend was sixteen at the time. So she knew she needed to mind her P's and Q's. It doesn't say if she went in there as a troubled kid or she went in there to try to just, you know what, I'm not having I'm not having a great time at school, so I need to yeah. try to do something with my life. It didn't really get into it with her. Um so Kim watches all four of them walk away, like sign themselves out. Uh-huh walk away and off to the park they go because her balcony is facing uh the outs i guess the outside where you exit out of the building and off to the park or wherever wherever you're going to catch the bus so, but um, she, so she has a good view so I she has a good view of of them because of, of the reenactment if you can tell it's just nothing but but street because you know how when you're in the hotel you kind of have that open driveway type yep. deal so it's kind of one of those things and just watches them all four walk away walk away and I'm just like, ooh, that's when I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God, I'm getting nervous. So at 8.50, Colleen is taken to the streets of, of, of Knoxville to Tyson Park. So I'm assuming Tyson Park is not too far away. Too from, far, probably. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, they just walked. They're just kind of walking. So probably. it's in the strip, like yeah. the area. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Um, and they're walking through the park. And as they're walking through the park, there's like this this pathway that's leading them kind of like it's it starts up here and you kind of start walking down and it's down to like where this bridge is at so you're where the pillars are at so they're kind of making their way down to where the pillars are at because there's a path that goes all the way down and it leads into uh the university of tennessee oh okay, so yeah okay. it's kind of they're walking but as they're walking it's getting more and more secluded Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's so a good pathway, long it's, pathway. It's a good and long pathway. Okay. And they end up right on the outskirts of uh the University of Tennessee and the park, like right at the edge. So I guess there, I don't I don't it doesn't say if there's something to separate it or they just know where where it lines up. Yeah. So as they end up there, as they're walking, making their way that way, it looks like Colleen is leading the them walking because they're all uh, right behind each other because the, the path is kind of narrow. A narrow. So they're all, it's Colleen and then whoever. Uh, I'm assuming it's going to be Krista uh, and then everybody else follows. So as they're walking, I guess Colleen starts getting this feeling like, oh, I'm in trouble. This is not good. It, because it starts getting darker. You're starting to get away from the city. You don't hear nothing. It's, 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 it's almost like it's pitch black. Okay. And so as they get there, she turns around because they're, they're already at the end. So she turns around and um, she's surrounded by all three of them. And then Krista, Krista is, Krista's like, oh, you still want to be with Tadaryl? You still want to be dating him? And starts an argument. What is his name? Tadaryl. Tadaryl? T-A-D, Tadaryl. Tadaryl. Oh, yeah, I know. That's why I was like, Tadero. I kept having to hear his name Give over. Give it Tadaryl. I, I <laughs> Sorry. I kept I kept having to hear his name and I was like to Daryl and I was like Daryl. Give it to Daryl, honey. <laughs> That's not, I don't like that name. Me neither. Um so she's like, You still want to be with him, you still like you still like him, kinda of started an argument. So she's antagonizing she's for an, no reason. For no reason. Um and then it quickly turns violent. It huh. quickly turns violent and they start stabbing her. <gasps> They start beating her. Oh my god, this escalated really quickly. Yes, yes. It like it. It's like they walk. They because Krista went with Krista went with the intent of wanting to do something to her. Well, no, we knew yeah, that much. Exactly, and I, I, I didn't know either how or the extent of how jealous she was. But she was able to convince the other two mm -hmm. to follow suit by stabbing or beating her up. Mm -hmm. It'll come out later why. Okay, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because as they're doing the investigation, it comes out to why. Okay. Um, sorry. Uh, where am I at? They're stabbing her, kicking her. Yeah, there's, they're, uh, they're stabbing her. They're beating her. And at this point, Colleen starts running for her life. So she, they, they start chasing her. And as they're starting to chase her, um, again, it's like they, they beat her. They stab her. She runs, 
They get her, they torture her, and it's like a, a, a cycle. Oh my a God. cycle. Until and, she can't. Until, yeah, until she can't because uh, it comes out that Colleen was fighting for her life for like almost 45 minutes. No. 45 minutes. For, oh my God, that's heartbreaking. It is. It's heartbreaking because when you're, when you're hearing um, how hard she fought for her life and for these individuals not to care, it's just like, man. Like, and, this is heartbreaking. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. Uh, Man, but she put up a good fight, she, poor little thing. Yeah, she put up a good fight. Uh, Colleen, and, uh, I'm sorry. It's because her names both start with C's. Uh, Krista stabbed Colleen almost over 300 times. <gasps> no, Mel, no. Yeah, because she was slowly trying to torture her. Oh, remember, oh, my God. They, they, oh, that gave me chills. They, they're, they're beating her. They're stabbing her. They're chasing her. They're torturing her. And it's, it's, it's so sad that this... Young woman had to go through this over nothing. Practic so, are did they say like uh, the guy and the other girl? Are they stabbing as well? Um, it comes out later. Okay, okay. Um, so, so it got to a point to where, in order to stop Colleen from running away from them, they take off her jacket and they take off her shirt. Because, remind you, it's 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 uh, in January in Tennessee, so it's, it's probably. It's, it's cold. So it's also to embarrass yeah. her. Uh, to an extent. To an extent because it comes out again later. No, why. I feel like you're doing that for a reason. Cause I've no, there's gonna, a reason. Like there's no... I, I wouldn't stop running. If, I mean, I know I'm a guy, but if I was a girl and somebody's stabbing me, naked or not, you're going to run. Mm -hmm. So the reason why she couldn't get up again after they take off the, the jacket and her shirt is because... While she's still alive, fighting for her life, mm -hmm. they carve a big pentagram on her body. Uh, wait, so, okay. Go ahead. While, so, are they stabbing her every which way, meaning front and back, mm -hmm. or are they just doing it in the back? No, it's, it's. I'm assuming it's probably going to be anywhere and everywhere that they were able to. Because it's getting chaotic. Yeah, because it's getting chaotic. And she's kicking and screaming. Okay, yes. okay. Yeah, so that's how, right. that's how I'm reading it, too, because that's how I understood it. Did you ever get to see a photo? Like, no. Not that you should see a photo, but mm -hmm. I'm saying like a... Okay, okay, mm -hmm. sorry. No. But you know how sometimes uh, coroners will have a body and will show you all the stabbings? Mm -hmm. They, they didn't show um, that? I don't think they show, they don't, no, they don't show that. Not not in this uh, episode that I saw because it only had that, that episode uh, where I saw it, it was called, I think it was called Film film Rise, True Crime, something like that. And that's the only thing that well, came We're going to need it for the credits. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so make sure you try, yeah. It. Trying to, I want to say it's Film Rise, uh, True Crime. And so in the episode, it does, I don't think it shows it. I didn't see it. No. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. And if it did, it was like a quick snippet and that was it. Okay. Um, so, so, it, so she's alive while they're carving this. So they cut a, a pentagram on her body while she's still alive. Okay. Um, it later comes out that it was part of a satanic ritual. Oh, okay. So the very end, Colleen is asking to spare her life to the very end. Yeah, she should. Um, and she, she's telling, uh, Krista, I'll, if you just let me go, I'll hitchhike. I'll leave town right now and you'll never have to hear from me again. Um, just let me go. Please let me go. And Krista at this point is getting aggravated because she's just like, she's still not dying. She's still, she's still here. Well, she's young. She's and, fighting. And this is, uh, this is where Krista picks up a piece of asphalt and starts smashing her skull. No. Yeah. And Krista's words said, this bitch wouldn't die, is why I grabbed oh the piece God. of asphalt. This is so, dis oh my God, so disturbing. And then Krista's like, while Krista's doing this and hitting her, Krista asked, do you know who's doing this to you? And Colleen answers with blood coming out all over her mouth. Yes. Yes, I do. Because she, it's almost like she like wanted. Like she wanted to take ownership. Yeah, like or that, it, or that power. Like I, like I got this. I got you. That's such a weird thing to ask. And and for me, it's just like when I'm picturing, you know, uh, Colleen 
just laying there taking the last breaths of her life and that's what you're gonna do like poor i i got a little emotional because i was like poor girl still has to answer to because it's like okay yes yes i do and it's just like why do you have to do this to her why do you have to torture her like that well i think that's what you said it's yeah. more like uh it, it's a control issue i think mm -hmm. and it's also a power move mm -hmm. to show like don't don't give credit to them mm -hmm. i did all this i, did all I this. set this up i got this in mm -hmm. order i did this mm -hmm. i want you to know right before you die that i did this exactly it's so disgusting it's so disgusting and mind you krista's only 18 at this point mm -hmm. i could not believe i was like at 18 you were already that's that was already there exactly well yeah that was already but there. It just, for me, it's just like, this girl did not deserve this by any means. Did it show, sorry to keep, I'm so no, sorry. Okay. Wow, I've never let you stop. I've never stopped so many times. <laughs> Have, uh, did they sh kind of showcase anything about her past? Like when she was younger, like a little more detail. Uh, as Other far than as... the revolving door, did, was she hurting animals? No. Did she show anything? Nothing like that. Oh, mm -mm. okay, okay. Nothing. It was just the, the assaults, uh, the rape. Because uh, to get too straight to the murders, it's exactly. or murder, it it doesn't seem. So I'm just gonna assume that it's probably because of what they were practicing is probably, and then all. So as she as she's uh, for me the way I read it when or the way I was hearing it when she was hitting her uh, with the asphalt, it's almost like she was taking out her anger of, of all the things that she went through when she was a child because her mom wasn't there to protect her. And it's not like her, I don't know if, I doubt that her grandparents ever stepped in at some point and said, you know, this little girl is getting hurt. Yeah. So I feel like she was taking it out on her. It sounds at the, like at it. The, at yeah. the very end. So the only reason why Krista stopped is when Co Colleen stopped uh, talking and stopped breathing. Is when she stopped smashing her head. She looks down at what she's done. Mm -hmm. It's a bloody mess. And says... Oh, I'm going to pick up this piece of skull and keep it as a souvenir. You got to be fucking kidding me. Mm -hmm. No, she didn't know. Yes, yeah, she did. And you see it later on. Oh. Uh, you, you see, I'll, it, it'll play in later. Yeah. Um, yeah, kept it as a souvenir. So after the murder, Krista, Tadero, and Shandela walk back to the building but at, be, right before they walk back to the building, they stop at a gas station to wash themselves off. Yeah, because they've got to be full of blood. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wash themselves off. Um, so they get back. They go to the gas station. From there, they go back to the building. And nobody's questioning anything why mm -hmm. you were a bloody mess. Because she has to have a ton of blood. If not all three, Unless they had one. it so planned out that they took extra clothes. But they but didn't again, mention but it. But it didn't, it didn't mention it. I feel like that's something they would have mentioned. Mm -hmm. no. But they, they didn't. No one said anything. Mm -mm. Because, so they signed back in. And when they signed back in, Krista goes straight to her best friend's room, uh, Kim. Goes straight over there and tells her everything. Everything that she did. Uh, and Kim is like in total disbelief. She's just like, I can't believe I'm hearing this. Like, what? Uh, and then... It, it almost feels like the excitement of mm -hmm. what happened. Mm -hmm. You know, when you win an award, you can't wait to tell somebody. Mm -hmm. And it almost feels like that kind of excitement. Like, oh my God, let me tell you what I just did. Yes. I beat that bitch up. Mm -hmm. You know, th yep. that kind of thing. You know, in the hood, you do that when you after a fight. Yes. But it, it, but this is what it seems like. Like, no, it's that, her it's prize. Exactly. Yes. She's, she's proud of what she did. Yeah. So, uh... As Chris is telling the story, she says, the bitch just wouldn't die. So I had to start hitting her with the asphalt. So again, she mentions that. Uh, she goes, I even cut her throat nine times. What? Mm -hmm. That's what she... I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure if that's what... If it's true. If it's true, but that's what she's telling her best friend, Kim. Oh, my God. This is so intense. Uh -huh. and, and she tells her, uh, and then I picked up a piece of her skull as souvenir and shows it to Kim. So proudly. So proudly. Look at look at what I got from, from what I did. How is Kim reacting at this point? She's she's, she's in total hysterical. She's, no, she just said she's in total shock. She's in disbelief. 
All she's doing is listen, listening to Krista tell the story. I would be scared of her. Mm -hmm. Like, she I was. feel like I was, I and would be was. like, I'm just going to listen and then I'm going to cry yes. after she's done. Uh, so right before Krista leaves Kim's room, she tells her, um, you better not tell anyone. And if you tell anyone, I'm going to come and kill you. So of course that completely scares uh, Kim's eyes a bit. But uh, she also changes the, their, their relationship. Um, well, there's no time for that. So as, as oh, she, God. yeah, she tells her, as she tells her that she, she smiles at her and says, love you. See you in the morning and closes her door. Not like a movie. Mm -hmm. And closes her door. So the next morning, about 7 a.m. on January 13th, Colleen's, bod uh, Colleen's body is discovered, partially displayed and partially covered. And I'm assuming wherever they, they left her, it, I guess she was, I, it doesn't say like there was a rock where there was bush. It just said it was partly covered, partially not. And it, it got to the point to where she was a, she was unrecognizable as a human being. Yeah, because she smashed mm -hmm. all her fucking face and mm -hmm. her skull. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, this is where they find out that her mom had been trying to, Colleen's mom had been trying to call her all night the night before. And she, because remember, Colleen's has Mom's a con intuition, honey. yeah, and she's calling her. Her, I guess they both they had a conversation almost every night, like, okay, this is what's going on, this is oh. what I did, Mom, so on and so forth. And she's like, I can't get a hold of her, and I can't get a hold of her. Um, and so the and mom she wasn't making a lot of friends. It's not like they mm -hmm. were going to ask for somebody. Exactly. So, but her mom the next day, she's like, I had, I had an appointment with my younger daughter, so I, it, I couldn't, I. I would have to like figure it out later. Like, okay, I'm going to call her later on, give yeah. her some time. Maybe, you know, she was asleep she, or something. Or upset. Yeah. Yeah. Something of that nature. Um, and then as time goes on, a d detective, Randy York, is assigned to what they call the job corpse. Uh, How much time is going on? It, like, it's not even that much. Like, everything's happening almost. Oh, because it's the way you said time goes on. So I'm thinking like uh, two well, months no, later. No, no, no. Time goes on, meaning like, okay, she called her. She couldn't get a hold of her. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. and then in the morning, uh, they find her body and uh, they assign the detective. So like immediately they're Almost moving. immediately. Yeah. Like, it's everything's happening quickly. Uh, they assign uh, Detective Randy York to the murder. And when he's... You know, investigating, he finds like she doesn't have her shirt on. She has pentagram on a cut on her chest, um, and he said the way that her her head was smashed, the way that her throat was cut, it almost like he knew where to go because she was so young. Because he knew, like I, again, that building must have not been far away because he ended up going and investigating. Uh, went back to the building where the program is being held. I Almost. wonder if maybe they're just accustomed to visiting that location. Pro probably, because it didn't look like uh, Tyson Park was far at all. But I'm, I'm saying it because I think it's so... That was his first instinct. Mm -hmm. That was his first Let's instinct. Let's go to the problem building. Yeah, because a lot of the students, a lot of the kids were cut, were troubled. So went straight to the building, uh, asked to talk to security. And he's like, hey, can you let me see your sign-out sheet? I want to know who came in and out of this building because I have a... I love a this detective. Wow. Yes, he was almost like... Boom, boom, boom. Yep, he knew what to do because uh, we have a body and I need to know who it is. So in that, this is where he finds four names signed out and only three names came back. And this is where he finds out... Uh, oh, he's quick. Yeah, he's quick. So right away, he's just like, these three names, which is to Daryl, Ship, uh, Krista Pike, and Shandella Peterson. I want a, I want a police officer at every door because I'm going to start uh, interviewing them. I'm going to start interviewing them. And in between that time... And they're all adults, right? Uh, uh, did you say that? No. Only Krista's the adult. So the other two are how old? Uh, the other two... I, I, the way I read it, because the, the, the... The trial happens almost a year later, so I'm gonna assume that they were 16 when it happened. Wait, because she was they, dating a child. Almost, yeah. Ew, no, okay, almost. Well, yes or yeah. No? well, yeah, he, she was, yeah. 
Because I thought, okay, well, they're all 18 is what I assumed. That shouldn't really be my focus. She murdered a, a, somebody else. Sorry, yes. go ahead. <laughs> so in between this time that they're getting ready to interview, uh, a police officer calls uh, Colleen's oh. mother and lets her know what's going on. Poor baby. Like, hey, we found her. It's not good. And explains to her everything that happened. And she's just like, there's no way. I don't believe it. You're lying to me. Kind of played that, that um, uh, what is it? When you were uh, in denial. She was in yes. denial. And they have also asked her, hey, as much as, you know, you want to be there, but it, everything's over the phone because the mom's in Florida. And this, this crime happened in, in uh, Tennessee. Tennessee. Mm -hmm. So they're like, we're going to need her dental records. We're going to need this. Yeah. So she's just like, no, no, no. So, of course, she does what she's what she's asked. I wonder if the mom was piecing it together. Like, can you imagine getting that call and you're, you as a mother have to get send dental records? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if she's not thinking, why am I sending that? No, they, they, they had told her what happened on, on that phone call. Yeah. No. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's like they're telling no. her what happened. I don't think that they went... I don't they, think they went into detail, and if they no, did, that's what I'm saying. She has to. Uh, no, I'm saying in the sense of they probably told her your daughter is on a, is dead, and mm -hmm. that we've got to get you over here, but bring her dental records and send us all the information. Why do you need your dental records if you already know who it is? Just to, to because she didn't know what actually happened. She didn't know probably what actually happened until Meaning they can identify her. Yeah, they need because they still needed to identify her. They still needed right. positive like ID. Um, remember, because she's unrecognizable. I mean, she's the face is completely beaten up, smashed in. Yeah, so it just I I feel for the mom. Um, oh yeah. So as he's investigating each uh, each person, he starts off with to Daryl, and in to Daryl's room, he's like, as I'm interviewing him, he has a heavy presence of satanic worshiping. To the point where he has an altar, he has a Bible and a lot of satanic literacy. Satanic. And he's satanic. Did I say? Oh, satanic. Sorry. Satanic. Like that? Satanic. Okay. Like say, say that. Say, satanic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so he knew that he's like, okay, well, I kind of have an idea of why they did what they did on her chest. Um, now they're piece, piecing that, that he's definitely involved. Yes, he's definitely involved. I'm going to assume that he helped hold her down when it was when they were probably cutting her. Because remember, it says he's the one that has the heaviest uh, worshiping in his room. Correct. Because yeah. how if she, if she fought for 45 minutes, that means she was kicking and fighting and pleading and doing everything she could. How are you going to be able to do a pentagram mm -hmm. on her mm -hmm. without without holding her down? down? So it yeah. doesn't make any sense. So yeah. true. So I it came out later on that uh, Tadero was the one uh, holding her down because it doesn't say Shandela if how involved she was, but she was there. No, fuck. You can't hold both. You can't hold both hands. I mean, I guess you could. I'm thinking that he was laying on her feet. You're right. And I then holding her, hand, her, her hands. I didn't even think about. But maybe she's but... got to be kick. No, she's gonna kick. She's gonna if she yeah. if she fought for 45 minutes, she's gonna kick and, and swing. swing. Yeah. She's not just screaming. She's kicking, swinging, and doing everything. No. Yeah. I didn't he even either think laid about on that. Her, yeah. Had her hands, you know, held down, or two and two. Yeah, two, one on the foot, one on the hand. Because they never mentioned uh, Shandela, so I was like, "Well, what did she do?" So I didn't, I never put her in the thought of, "Well, maybe she held her feet, or maybe she held her hands." You probably or, won't also see the information because they're mm -hmm. underage. They're underage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so then he goes, he moves on into uh, Krista Pike's room, and same thing had a bunch of you know uh, literacy on satanic. Am I saying that right? Satanic. Yeah. Satanic worshiping. And so Krista and Tadero were heavy into that practice. Okay. And it wasn't like they were keeping it a secret. People knew around the school or the building uh, that they were practicing this stuff. And I'm like, how do you allow this to happen? I or mean, is it's it... their individual choice to do certain things. So I'm sure that's considered like the religion Gen part. Yeah. So I'm sure they didn't want to touch it. You're probably right. 
Um, and then Krista had a little, little devil on her right chest. Um, and this is where Detective York uh, starts suspecting that Krista Pike was the ringleader of, of this like operation as they, they, so to speak, call it. Uh, so right away they took in uh, Krista Pike because she confessed. She confessed to the murder. Again, it's award winning. I did it. Uh, confessed to the murder. And I, when they took her from the building to the police station, I guess they interrogated her. Hey, how did it happen? You confess. You need to let me know. And at that time, she reenacts what she did to Colleen. So she acts like herself and she acts like Colleen. I bet you she, that bitch had a, like, a smirk or a smile during the, that. The way the detective described it is, like, um, <clears throat> she was happy and she was giddy. Like, <laughs> I made her feel like this. <laughs> I did this to her. <laughs> like that. Or the way uh, Colleen was responding. So it's almost like she was laughing at her responses. You're it's like, it's an award-winning performance. I'm going to give it to you guys. I'm going to reenact for you guys exactly what I did. Ew. Just, you know. And no remorse at all whatsoever during this whole time. So gross. So on January 15th, 1995, Detective York charged Christina Pike to Daryl Shipp, Shandela Peterson with the murder of Colleen Slims. Slimmer. Sorry, Slimmer. And then this trial kind of starts right away because remember, she confessed. So it doesn't, it's not like, okay, why I didn't well, do it. Well, not that right away because yeah. you said a year, right? Um. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> so, I was like, it's not like a well, not, not, well, of course. I mean, they're they're doing the investigating and all of that, but it's not well, like they're getting all everything, everything together. Yeah, right. I know. So it's not like okay, well, no, I didn't do it. Let me wait two years. Let me wait this. Um, sorry, misinformation on my part. Um, and during the trial, it is described as Krista loved the attention, almost like she was a celebrity. Fuck off, Krista. And, Fuck all the way off. And uh, Colleen's mother was there the whole time. There the whole time through all the process. Yeah, she's going to have to hear it. She goes, never did Krista ever look at me. And never did Col uh, Krista's parents ever look at me. Because they, they, couldn't, they couldn't face me. But yet, here she is acting, oh my God, I did it. Yes, guys, it was me. At the end of the, yes, but at the end of the day, it's two separate things. Mm -hmm. Like your daughter chose to do that, not the parents. You yeah, know, no, yeah, that's different. I uh, think, I but think, but they should have at least been remorseful towards exactly. Like, like we're so sorry. sorry. Let me yeah. pull you aside. They I, don't have to, but they could have. Yeah, should've. yeah, to at least know, like, hey, you know what? We this is not how we raised her, but I'm so sorry if that's if if that's all I can do for you for right now then I'm sorry. That's all they can offer. Yeah. Is exactly. an apology. Correct. And of course that didn't happen. Um, so this is where it gets a little intense. This is where I got emotional for Colleen's mother. Oh. So in this time, the jury, the jury, I was trying to practice that too. The jury was shown Colleen's skull. And you see the piece that's missing in the back. The piece that uh, Krista took as a souvenir. Like her skull is in the courtroom. How big is this? I mean, I, I'm just wanting to picture how they have to walk around and be and shown this. Um, it, what well, is the big, how it big gets, is it? It gets, they don't have to walk around. So what they do is they give Colleen's skull to every single person on the jury. And they all but get But how to, big is it? It's, it's, it, it doesn't look that big, but I don't know how a human skull looks at the age of 20. Well, no, I'm just assuming, is it like, I, this is what I mean by the question. Is it a centimeter? Is it an inch long? Is it three inches? Is it five? Is it a big piece? Are you referring to the souvenir? The skull. Oh, the skull? I well, don't. the skull is a souvenir. No, because uh, Krista took a small piece of it, and then there's the actual skull of Colleen's. I'm so sorry, then yeah. I was misunderstanding. Yeah. I thought you meant... That they were walking the piece that she kept no. as a souvenir. No. You're saying they're walking the, the, whole, the, whole, skull. Skull, the whole I'm skull. sorry. I'm with yeah. you now. But this is where you, you see the missing piece of it, of what she kept. And each person is holding it in their hand, obviously examining mm -hmm. it. And at that time, pieces are coming off of her skull. Like pieces are falling. And the mom's watching this. Colleen's mom is watching each person hold her daughter's skull and pieces falling off. 
And she can't get emotional because if she gets too emotional where she's too she loud, she she's going to get kicked out. Correct. So she had to have that very stern face. And I was just like, dude, it for a parent to sit there and hear the jury, uh, the trial of her daughter getting murdered and then to see the actual skull of her daughter and it being passed around. I feel, this is just my opinion, that's almost like an invasion of privacy because this is part of her daughter. And they, I, I get why they're doing it. They have to do no, it. No, yeah, I get why they're doing As it. As a but... juror, I would want to know every single piece of it because mm -hmm. when it comes to the time that I've got to decide how long, mm -hmm. is it something that was an accident? Mm -hmm. Is it preventable? Or is it something planned out? Mm -hmm. And at the look of it, I'd be like, bitch, you are, get ready, because mm -hmm. you are sentenced to death. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. Yeah. I would want to know. I, I, still felt, I still felt for the mom because she couldn't get emotional. But it was okay for Krista to cry in this moment only when they were showing the skull. I don't, I don't, I don't understand it. I didn't know where her tears were coming from. I don't like maybe you might. No, I don't think I I would I wouldn't know that either. I but I can assume or I would yeah, yeah. I would like to wonder if it was because she didn't get to smash it all. Yeah. Or she didn't get a bigger piece of a souvenir. Does that make sense? No, no, it makes sense because I couldn't like I, couldn't I wouldn't. Understand. I don't think she has the capability to think like I'm so sad at what I did. No, no, no. I think it's I can't. Maybe it's I can't hold it. It could be that too. Like in I comparison agree, yeah. to everybody Cause I, else. I guess because I was too fixated on how the mom felt that I didn't think like why Krista was crying about it. I don't think yeah. it had to be remorse. I think yeah. it had to do something else. Something that's, you and I crazy. probably wouldn't think of. Yeah, no, I didn't. That's what I was like. I don't understand why she's crying. Um, so this did take a toll on Colleen's mom, uh, Mary uh, Martinez, to the point to where she started having nightmares. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And when she had to go identify her daughter's body, she saw everything that they did to her. So even more so, she couldn't, like, she goes, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't, like, I kept picturing you know, when I identified her body and I felt oh so God. bad for her. She goes, it's the point now where I have to start taking medication for this. Yeah. And I'm just like, I'm oh. sure those thoughts are in her head shooting like a movie in her head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so on March 29th, 1996, Krista Pike was found guilty for the murder of Colleen Slimmer. On March 30th, 1996, 18 year old Pike was sentenced to death row. And this is where the waterworks come out for Krista. Because she's like, she didn't think this was going to come for her. Yeah, because she probably thought she was mm -hmm. only getting like 20 years and I can do mm -hmm. good service and I'm out in 10. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, she, the way she was crying, I was just like, but you did what you did. And you didn't just do what you did. You did it with such hate in your heart, in your hands. Like, this girl did not deserve it. And you don't think you deserve the death penalty? Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm, as she's going along, I'm pulling up photos to kind of just see exactly what she's referring to. There's, like, no tears in there. No. There's. She's red. Mm -hmm. She looks like she's crying. But where are the tears? Like, you can't even see them. Look how young she was. Yeah, she... Yeah. It, Mind you, she's a very beautiful woman. Yeah, she is. Look, thick, beautiful mm -hmm. red hair. It It's so weird, but there's nothing, girl. There ain't nothing behind there. That's scary. Mm -hmm. Like behind the eyes is what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So um, it didn't even take, this is how long it took the jury to decide, we're going to send you to, uh, you're guilty for murder. It took them 90 minutes. Out of those 90 minutes, an hour was for lunch. So it took them 30 minutes to decide. 30 minutes. You're guilty. I wonder if they just sat there and were like, mm -hmm. while they're choosing life, right? We're going to get food, but with life, right? Yeah. All right? So on January 12th, 1997, the judge sentenced... Krista's body to be subjected to shock by electric, by the electric chair. Because remember, they also have to give you the sentence. Even though you're sent to Correct. death row, 
they're still going to send you and say exactly what they want to happen. Correct. And of course, she's crying again. I can't believe this is happening. I can't like hearing her. It's just one murder. <laughs> yeah. Just one person. So Krista Pike is sent to Deborah K. Johnson Rehabilitation Center awaiting her execution. While on death row, she's in there 20, 23 hours of the day. She comes up for one hour. And of course, she's probably because of how psych, I don't even want to say psychotic because it's not the word, but how crazy she is in her head because she's never diagnosed. Like psychologically, yeah. she is not in the place uh, like you and to I be, would be. Yeah. And they never, they never say that she's diagnosed, but they keep saying she has a traits of a psychopath behavior like I'm this. I'm amazed that she not once was seen by a counselor or, or mm -hmm. somebody that was like, hey, there's some red flags here. Because she's 18, so she probably doesn't want to... Before like, that. Oh, I mean. before that. Okay. Uh, so on August 24th, 2001, Krista Pike attacks and attempted to strangle a fellow inmate, Patricia Jones. Because this is all... This plays into uh, where she's at now. Um... And she tries to say, strangle her with the shoelace because, again, she's jealous. Oh, well, she wants to date the girl that I like. You know how they are in there in prison. Yeah. You, <laughs> carpet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm in the LGBTQ. I, I, I can say that. And she almost, she almost succeeded. She almost succeeded in murdering this fellow inmate. But the guards come in just in time, revive... Uh, revived the uh, inmate and on August 12, 2004 Pike is convicted of attempted first degree murder. murder. So there's death row. Moida. Sorry, murder. <laughs> Moida. Sorry. Jose. Sorry, 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 sorry. And in early 2000 Pike uh, tries to make an escape plan. So I'm like this girl is just not stopping. Uh, and she gets I'm going to butcher his last name. I try to practice it, but I can't. It's Donald. Kahoot. Kahoot. There you go. Who lived in New Jersey. I was really surprised. I was like, so I, I'm assuming he became a pin pal and slowly they started writing back and well, forth. Anytime that these, these people are on this like media and they're all over the U.S. Mm -hmm. the, the crazies come out. The most disgusting other crazy people. Oh my God, she's so pretty. I want to be with her. <laughs> they all do that. And she is. Look she's, at Ted Bundy. Look yeah. at, I mean, look at all these. Even yeah. the one with the bad breath and smelly body. Ooh. What was his name? Richard uh, Ramirez. No. Or was it Richard Ramirez? And Richard Ramirez was disgusting and gross. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah his yeah. breath stunk. He had the stench, yeah. honey. And they still wanted him. So this guy would visit uh, Krista once to twice a month he would drive all the way from new jersey to uh where she's being held in uh tennessee not for free cookie <laughs> well Dude, she can't even come out she can't even come out yeah exactly but remember they're trying to make an escape plan so she can come out and they can have fun oh my God. <laughs> and they enlist a corrections officer by the name of justin uh uh heflin <laughs> heflin sorry i practiced his name uh, who is willing to get paid in cash and gifts. Of course, doesn't get very far because an investigation starts almost right away. I guess by her behavior and how Rats, they're listening. girl. Somebody read her out. Yeah. Good for them. Either they're listening to phone calls or they're watching her correspondence. Um, so, and it's a joint investigation between the Tennessee Department of Corrections, Tennessee Bureau of Investigations, and the New Jersey Police. And they discover the escape plan of course, these guys get arrested. Good. You know, yeah, don't even get to help her out. So in between all that time between Krista Pike getting uh, sentenced to death all the way till it started from June of 2001 to October 1st, 2019. It's appeal after appeal of after course. appeal. Of I was course. like, of course, the, oh, the justice system. Uh, and of course, all they're all denied. So finally, uh, execution date for Crystal Pike was August 27, 2020. But because of the pandemic, oh, that's it, right. it doesn't come to life. It doesn't happen. Yeah, it doesn't happen. Um, so on June 7, 2021 is the last time that Pike is able to file an appeal. It's denied. 
By November 2022, Pike has completely exhausted all her appeals. She can mm -hmm. no longer appeal. So on March 10th, 2024, the state of Tennessee has Wait, yet... Wait, what? This year? March 10th, 2024, the state of Tennessee has yet to give an, an execution date for Krista Pike. Oh, y'all motherfuckers in hurry up. She's, on, she's still on death row. Still on Ooh, death row. Oh, y'all make me mad, honey. To Daryl Ship received a life sentence plus 25 years since he was 17 at the time of the trial uh he was tried as a minor and will be up for parole in 2026 because they can only give him how many years well i think that's only in the state of texas i'm not oh. sure i don't know if that's overall i would have to look into but that because he's okay, okay but because okay. he's a minor it's probably why they um, that's why they added an extra 25 mm -hmm. because they're like, we can't tack all of that. that on, yeah. And what's her name? And then Shandella Peterson pleaded guilty to being an accessory after the fact, mm -hmm. receiving six years probation. She was 17 at the time of the trial and was treated as a minor is probably why she got what she got. I'll bet you anything. If Look, if you were able to sit there and watch a human being get murdered not in not in just a regular fashion in a car crash bitch you saw them stab her you saw one girl break her skull open mm -hmm. grab the skull take it with you you were able to watch that something tells me that she is not a good human being mm -hmm. and that you'll see this bitch again in jail but hopefully she she learned her lesson i, I hope so i hope so even even or well, to daryl still locked up so Keep he, his ass in there, yeah, too. so parole won't happen until 2026. I was like, oh, that's in like two years. Two years. I'm like... No, it, it, it's frightening. Mm -hmm. I didn't... I honestly didn't know. And now that we're all, we're finished with the, the thing, which is a really good episode, I couldn't tell her haircut because look how short it is. And look, she's wearing a black sweater. Yeah. So I couldn't tell how long it was. For those of you, I, I know uh, my hair is really black. So And then I'm wearing a black sweater because Jose, it's like... Antarctica in here. Yeah, it's super cold. Super cold. <laughs> and I walked in. Even I got cold today. Because and I it, was, up like... it was me and my daughter who got a, a haircut right before we, we arrived to Jose's house. And you notice my daughter's because hers is like. Uh... Well, she also announced it. I <laughs> oh, okay. It. She, okay. You know, I was coming downstairs. She scared me. And then she was like, hey, give me a hair king. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, it looks good. Because I thought she was going to cut off a lot on her. Yeah. And it looks perfect. It looks yeah. It like suits her. Yeah. Well, she comes in and I didn't see her, honey. <laughs> yeah, we just got ready for the episode. Let's go. Let's go. And midway, I'm just like, oh, shut up. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> I was like, oh, it looks good. <laughs> but yes, no, you did a fantastic job. I hadn't heard of the story. If it, I hope this bitch has what she has coming to her. Krista, sit your ass down. Yeah, because in the end, right, right at the end of the episode, um, Colleen's mom's like, can you not wait another 25 years? Can you please just set an execution date? Like, I can't wait any longer. Why are we having to wait and care for what Chris is doing mm -hmm. when she didn't care when back then about a human being? You could tell she's at the level that if she's out and somebody is looking mm -hmm. at her, man, baby, it's over. It's over. It's over. Or just looking at her the wrong way. I mean, because she did it again in prison. In prison. She, she almost... Uh, she almost killed one of uh, an inmate because, oh my God, she likes my my girlfriend. Which is the exact same reason yeah, why yeah. she got rid of Colleen. Well, either way, I'm just glad that this is over and mm -hmm. we are done. And I hope she has what she has coming to her. Mm -hmm. With that said, thank you so much for everything. Thank you for listening. Dame un besito because we got to go. Bye. Bye.